Most people, in their drive to get rich, are trying to build an empire state building on a 6-inch slab. The size of your success is measured by the strength of your desire, the size of your dream, and how you handle disappointment along the way. More money seldom solves someone's money problems. I'd rather be welcoming change than dreading change. The more we knew about the power of money, the more distant we grew from the teachers and our classmates. The most life-destroying word of all is the word tomorrow. An asset puts money in my pocket. A liability takes money out of my pocket. A person can be highly educated, professionally successful, and financially illiterate. By not understanding money, the vast majority of people allow its awesome power to control them. An intelligent person hires people who are more intelligent than he is. A mistake is a signal that it is time to learn something new, something you didn't know before. Having two dads offered me the choice of contrasting points of view, one of a rich man and one of a poor man. One of the reasons the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the middle class struggles in debt is that the subject of money is taught at home, not in school. Winners are not afraid of losing. But losers are. Failure is part of the process of success. People who avoid failure also avoid success. I developed my financial IQ because I want to participate in the fastest game and biggest game in the world. My educated dad stressed the importance of reading books, while my rich dad stressed the need to master financial literacy. I'd rather welcome change than cling to the past. The massive loss of jobs in recent times proves how shaky the middle class really is financially. The greater your financial intelligence, the easier it is to tell whether a deal is good. My educated dad's personal financial statement best demonstrates the life of someone caught in the rat race. His expenses match his income, never allowing him enough left over to invest in assets. Most people fail to realize that in life, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you keep. The richest people in the world look for and build networks, everyone else looks for work. If my wife and I were to buy a bigger, flashier house, we realize it wouldn't be an asset. It would be a liability since it would take money out of our pocket. Our assets are large enough to grow by themselves. It's like planting a tree. You water it for years, and then one day it doesn't need you anymore. People often work harder than they need to because they learned how to work hard, but not how to have their money work hard for them. Cash flow tells the story of how a person handles money. Our staggering national debt is due in large part to highly educated politicians and government officials making financial decisions with little or no training in the subject of money. The best investments are usually first sold to sophisticated investors, who then turn around and sell them to the people playing it safe. The middle class finds itself in a constant state of financial struggle, their expenses tend to increase in proportion to their salary increase, hence, the phrase the rat race. Rich people acquire assets. The poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. There will be a hundred people like Bill Gates and hugely successful companies like Microsoft created every year, all over the world. And there also will be many more bankruptcies, layoffs, and downsizing. The problem with secure investments is that they are often sanitized, that is, made so safe that the gains are less. Higher incomes cause higher taxes, also called bracket creep. It's not what you say out of your mouth that determines your life, it's what you whisper to yourself that has the most power. The more a person seeks security, the more that person gives up control over his life. You're only poor if you give up. 
the best way to predict the future is to study the past, or prognosticate. Just like a board game, the world is always providing us with instant feedback. Occasionally, we all need to look in the mirror and be true to our inner wisdom rather than our fears. The world is always handing you opportunities of a lifetime, every day of your life, but all too often we fail to see them. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth seemingly instantaneously. If you want to be rich, don't allow yourself the luxury of excuses. Don't be addicted to money. Work to learn. Don't work for money. Work for knowledge. Personally, I use two main vehicles to achieve financial growth, real estate and small cap stocks. Intelligence solves problems and produces money. Money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. When you are young, work to learn, not to earn. When it comes to money, high emotions tend to lower financial intelligence. I know from personal experience that money has a way of making every decision emotional. Again, my success reflects the importance of a strong financial foundation, which starts with a strong financial education. Old ideas are their biggest liability. It is a liability simply because they fail to realize that while that idea or way of doing something was an asset yesterday, yesterday is gone. Pattern of treating your home as an investment, and the philosophy that a pay raise means you can buy a larger home or spend more, is the foundation of today's debt-ridden society. If people are prepared to be flexible, keep an open mind and learn, they will grow richer and richer despite tough changes. Complaining about your current position in life is worthless. Have a spine and do something about it instead. Often, the more money you make the more money you spend, that's why more money doesn't make you rich, assets make you rich. If you want to be rich and maintain your wealth, it's important to be financially literate, in words as well as numbers. Money is really just an idea. The poor and the middle class work for money. The rich have money work for them. The fear of being different prevents most people from seeking new ways to solve their problems. If all your money is tied up in your house, you may be forced to work harder because your money continues blowing out of the expense column, instead of adding to the asset column, the classic middle class cash flow pattern. This educated middle class subscribes to the dogma put out by mutual fund brokers and financial planners, play it safe, avoid risk. That is the reason it is so hard to motivate kids in school today. They know that professional success is no longer solely linked to academic success, as it once was.